Hello from Staplewood. It's Saints' first under-23 league fixture at home for nearly a month now. And these two sides couldn't be any more evenly matched if they tried either. Both Southampton and Fulham have played nine, won four and lost five. Both have got 12 points as well. And both have scored the same number of goals as they've conceded. So we'll see what kind of contest we're going to have tonight. Hopefully an entertaining one. And it's a very, very experienced side out there for Southampton tonight as well. Number of senior players, including the goalkeeper, Alex McCarthy, the former Reading goalkeeper in goal for Southampton. So uh, again, in front of him, you've got PA, Stevens, Bednarik and Matt Target. So again, Bednarik got sent off a month ago here, but starts tonight. And again, you've got uh, four players who've all played in the senior side. So that's the back line for Southampton. The usual 4-2-3-1 formation for them. James Ward-Prowse, who scored a delicious free kick against Newcastle a few weeks ago when Saints won 6-2, goes in the middle with Hoybier, who's controlled things in the middle over the last few matches for the under-23s. Uh, an attacking lineup there of Hesketh, who's played a few games in a row now after recovering from injury. McQueen, out left, who scored three goals this season. And the former Arsenal man, Nathan Teller, makes up the third of those attacking midfielders. And Marcus Barnes, who will be looking to continue a good run of form as far as the goal-scoring form is concerned, as that lone man up front. So that's the Saints team. And again, there's a few youngsters on the substitutes bench, but all have experience at this level, especially Alfie Jones, who generally is the under-23s captain, but he is one of the five substitutes tonight. It's a big night for James Ward-Prowse, looking to prove himself tonight. And a big night for all of them, really. Uh, Saints get this one underway, and it's out up towards Jordan Graham, but a free kick to Southampton. So Fulham have Norman in goal, Sessegnon, Davis, Diallo and Suarez at the back, Harris and O'Reilly in the middle, with Kivaneski out wide with Thor Steenson, with Jordan Graham as the attacking midfielder behind Adebayo, who's their top goal scorer this season with six goals. Joining me tonight in the commentary box, I'm pleased to say, is Jake Flanagan, the Saints player. And Jake, hopefully it should be a good game today because two sides, there's absolutely nothing in it as far as uh, league form is concerned anyway. Yeah, it's going to be a, a tight game, but um, we're playing a strong team this uh, uh, tonight and... Um, Hopefully we can take three points away from them. Uh, fingers crossed as Fulham uh, get it away. Now it's aimed up towards Hoybier, who's not going to get there. Now it's played back again this time from target towards McCarthy then in a Southampton goal. It's going to be a different type of competition tonight um, compared to their last game when they um, beat QK Southampton in the Hampshire Cup 12-0. And sort of say it's a bit of an unfair competition for the other teams and obviously we've got every professional player so I think tonight's going to be a completely different challenge but hopefully we can take the goals and the confidence from that last game and show it in this game as well. Yeah, so them to play it forward and a half full of goals for Marcus Barnes as well isn't it tonight so he'll be looking to keep his place in the side. Yeah he, uh, he got a hat-trick in the last game and like I said although it's a different competition hopefully he's feeling confident tonight and hope to grab a couple more. That's uh, Fulham coming forward now down the left. Chance to put the ball in. It comes off Pierre's foot. And Jeremy Pierre, the ex Leon and Nice man who missed most of last season. A challenge from him and out for an early throw then to Fulham. Who uh, beat Norwich 2 0 at home in their last Premier League 2 match. Have won their last two, including a 4 1 win at Wolves. So they're a team certainly on form. And now it's O'Reilly plays it down the line, down the left. Ball in takes a deflection. We're picked up well there from McCarthy, just to ease the pressure. And it's a good run this from Saints. There's a few options. McQueen across, Hoybier. Lovely ball. Quite bring that down, but the shot comes in again. An early shot there on the edge of the box there from Teller. It's a positive start there from Alwyn. Alwyn goal, he's got the ball in first thought is forward and he's sent us straight on the attack and that's one shot on goal for us already. It's a lively start this one. Now Fulham have got uh, a one man on the right hand side. Is it Nakers of space here? Kievneski thinks about shooting. The opportunity went in the end. Holly Bier with a challenge. Again. It's a shot comes in as well. Blocked in well, the end there from Jack Stevens from Adebayo's shot. Well stood up there from Jack. They're going to have to stop him tonight, those Saints, aren't they? A man certainly on form with all those goals out of air this season. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
the back four, this midfield two, are all going to have to communicate to try and stop him. And obviously, he's the danger man. So I think we'll be talking and making sure that he doesn't have a spare yard to get a shot off. Well, Fulham with an early corner then, which Matt O'Reilly, who's had lots of first team experience uh, with the first team, calls in towards a corner flag. Away it goes, a shot comes in, it's in, it takes a deflection, and Fulham have scored. And a disastrous start for Southampton. And it was only within the first three minutes of this match. And Fulham's first real opportunity. And Jordan Graham made absolutely no mistake whatsoever. Southampton nil, Fulham won. Yes, not the start we would have hoped for. But I think we've got enough experience out there to put that behind us and pick ourselves up and continue how we were starting. Because as you've seen, it was, it was a pretty positive start from us. Absolutely, and it was uh, Graham with a finish. And again, one of these players is going to have a sight on goal there, Jordan Graham, and he took absolutely took it really well. Made no mistake there on loan from Wolverhampton Wanderers as Target plays it back for Saints. It'll be interesting to see how Southampton can respond now. That early goal, the cross out wide. Saints have got uh, options here. Heskus there as an option up there, but Gay plays it back instead. It's great to see Heskey return from injury, obviously. Being injured myself, I spent a lot of time with him and, and I know how hard it is when you are injured and watching games week, week in, week out. It's difficult, but you know he's come back in great form. He's got himself three goals in three games, I believe. So I think every game is going to get better and he's, he's got a lot of potential to be a top, top player. And he was knocking on the door, wasn't he? he was, well, he did get into the first team at times last season, but you get the feeling a run of games again and he could well be in contention again, I think. Oh, definitely. Like I said, he's been out for the best part of the season and um, he's already come back and sort of taken to that 10 role again very easily and he's got himself a couple of goals. So here's target. Southampton coming forward now with McQueen. Blocked down the right-hand side. It's uh, Sessignon with a challenge. Southampton out of play. So Fulham with an early lead. I think it was a shock here for the players here at home, especially when you look at Southampton's lineup today. It's a very strong-looking lineup. This one played across here towards Teller, looking for an instant response. Hesketh, good touch from him. McQueen. It's been a good response from the boys. This doesn't look like the goal's affected them and they've spent most of the time in their half since the goal. As McQueen tried to put it in there for Southampton. But another throw, which is going to be taken again from target this time. And there is opportunities in this Southampton side, isn't there? When you look at all the players they do have, Ward Prowse and Hesketh. McQueen, they're all creative players. Yeah, we've got technically very good players, and then I think we've got to utilise the pace of men like Nathan, uh, men like Nathan, Marcus, and I think that's going to be key tonight, getting in behind the fullbacks and making them think backwards. Yeah, absolutely, and now Fulham on possession now, looking to play it down the line, picked up well, comes off a Fulham man, Givanevsky off his foot. Target to take the throw. Stephen Sabed Narek forward now again. In space, Hampton coming forward again. Charter PA to play it square towards Teller, but it's picked up now from Suarez. And it's going to go out of play. So an early goal then from Jordan Graham separating these two. Southampton's last Premier League 2 win was last month when they beat Newcastle by six goals to two at St Mary's Stadium. It was a similar kind of side that played then, they were playing tonight, so similar, lots of goals yeah, in. Similar lineup, and we were very clinical that night and then obviously James Wilkhouse's free kick topped, topped off the evening and pretty much summed up that performance really so although we're one nil down I think there is definitely potential here to have a similar performance I think yeah he's certainly got a great shot on him hasn't he Ward Prowse you've seen him do it in the senior side time and time again but that was right out of the top draw that free kick from 30 yards yeah I mean you see him do it all the time in training because he works on it so to see it going was nice to see now is Hoybier looking to pull the strings in the middle. Here's Target. The 
looking for the run. The ball up towards Barnes. It's a great ball there from target. Saints looking to capitalise. They're going to win their first corner of the evening as well. And Saints again have certainly got men who can cause problems here. Bednarek coming forward, so too is Stevens. Yeah, it's a nice little ball down the line from Matty. It's an effective pass, gets the centre backs facing the wrong way, running back to, uh, to their own goal. And that's, that's not what you want to be doing as a defender. So, smart pass. It's going to be a corner kick then for Saints players inside the penalty area. Curled in towards the far post, so it's a decent head or way. Here's O'Reilly. It's going to be too far for Gibaneski though, for Fulham. And out for a throw instead. Well, Fulham had lost nine games in a row, including the four games at the end of last season, but they've been on a good run of form now. They've won four of their last five in the PL2, so you get the feeling for Saints is one of those. It's a little bit unfortunate they're playing Fulham just when they're banging form. Playing them at a bad time, but I still think there's something in this for us tonight. As it's back now to MacArthur. Diallo. Suarez back, here's Davies. Barnes looking to cause some problems here for Norman with his first real touch. O'Reilly square across. PA, loads of space, looks to take advantage. Well, it's a decent ball in, caused problems. Potentially, if there was a Saints man in there on the edge of the six-yard box, but yeah, it was fast attacking play. I think the ball's in the right area. It's just we just couldn't quite get up there with him. Harris across. Graham out wide. Or Prowse. And target finds McQueen. Yeah, good composure there. We was under a bit of pressure, but we kept composed and managed to play our way out. Yeah, that's better from Saints. Good football now looking to come forward. It's played back. Stevens out left to target again. The easily born fullback. And under pressure, he just calmly played it back there. Saints doing well here, just patient build up, looking for those openings. I think that's key as well. Not trying to force the play through the team. Keep shifting it side to side and wait for that opening because it, it will come. And um, yeah, they're showing very good patience. Yeah, the best passage of play so far from Saints here. Stringing 12, 13, 14 passes together. And now the two wingers switch sides. McQueen to Hoybier. Well, for more Prouse. Target again, back to Stevens, who plays it forward again to Ward Prowse, the captain. Still got it, the defender. He's going to shoot with his right foot. It was worth a go from there. That would have been quite spectacular from I mean, the I, th I thought he was going to lose the ball there, but he's worked his feet quite well. He had the full of man all over him. So I thought the ref was going to blow up for a free kick at some point there, but well, that's dropped for him nicely. and. You won't blame him for having a shot from there as a centre back, would you? It certainly wouldn't. It fell nicely for him there from distance. But out for a goal kick it goes. Well, the Saints camp was saying on the official website before the match that they're expecting it to be a fairly even encounter tactically and technically between the two sides. As we were saying, certainly points wise suggests. There's not much in it between the two sides, although, as we were saying, Saints have got one of their more experienced sides of the season out there tonight. And now they're coming forward with Hoybier out wide. I think shots from distance might be important tonight as well, because it's going to be it's a slick surface, low shots. You know, it's difficult for keepers to deal with, could bobble, strikers could pounce on it, so... I think shots from, from distance could be could be very important. Yeah, certainly players from both sides that can cause problems in that area. And now Fulham up towards halfway. Here's Graham, the goal scorer, has been 
playing well tonight, has some good touches and there's another one out left. Suarez plays it forward, chipped in towards the penalty area and it's in again and Fulham have extended their lead. Adebayo with his seventh goal of the season and it's turning into a rather miserable night so far for Southampton early on. Yeah, it's like you were saying, he's a danger man and um, he's made a smart move into the back post, used his height well. Uh, he's just used his height against Matty, got on top of him. I don't think there's a lot he could have done there really, target himself. Lovely chip, wasn't it, from Thorsteinson in towards the box. Yeah, it's a smart ball. Here. So, I don't think Southampton were expecting this one here early on at Staplewood, but Fulham lead here by two goals to nil. And Peter Grant, the Fulham coach, the former Celtic midfielder, has got them out the traps quickly here tonight. And it's not a true reflection of how the first half's been so far, though, so I feel like we've been on top and probably controlled the game more so, but obviously at the end of the day, it's putting the ball in the back of the net. That's right, two chances for Fulham, isn't it? Two goals. So, played it forward now towards uh, Ward Prowse, and now Saints again looking to come forward to McQueen. Decent ball in, caused problems. Again, it's Hit another behind. positive reaction from conceding. We've got ourselves a corner straight from the kickoff. Yeah, it's been a strange old game, this one, hasn't it? As you say, Saints have probably had more possession so far. Definitely. But they win their second corner of the evening as well. Just hope it's not one of those games where we have all the opportunities and you know, don't, don't end up getting goals. Or press into the box. Headed clear. Chance now for Hesketh. Oh, comes off the referee there, Adam Bromley. Now Jordan Graham looking to get in on the action. So Graham was one of those players when he played for Wolves last season. Picked up a bad injury, but he was one of these who was... Uh, Certainly tip for bigger and better things. I'm sure that is still the case for him. He's played well so far tonight. And Ward Prowse is on the ball now for Saints. As we were saying, a strange old start to this one. But two goals for the away team. Although we're being patient in possession, Fulham are also being very patient in their defending. They're not committing. They're making us play around them. It's, it's going to be difficult for us to break them down. But... I think we've had some success already. And now a free kick for Southampton. We've seen so far times this season that once Saints have got one goal, they have gone flying it at times, like Reading at home, 4-0, as well as Newcastle. But this is great football, this from Saints, if they can take advantage. Well time challenge though as target came forward. Yeah, maybe that's what we need. Maybe we just want to hit the need to hit the back of the net once and hopefully they will start flying it. But again, positive play there, breaking the lines down, Matty Target getting forward. Yeah, that was great one-touch football, wasn't it, involving three or four of them there, really. It could have easily have... It's a greatly timed tackle up. by the Fulham man. Absolutely, did time it well there, Davies, and now Southampton again. As you we were saying about Saints, have had a good amount of possession. It's generally been in Fulham's half, hasn't it, between the two teams? But yeah, so I was saying, it's not been a, the score doesn't reflect how the first half has been. That like we've we had 80% of the possession. Yeah, it's been a, an odd start, but Southampton forward to Teller, back to Ward Prowse has got McQueen in space down the left, finds him. Well left from Hesketh. Queen in, oh, it's a dangerous ball to tell her. And to might have another bite of cherry here is McQueen. Hesketh. Flags up. You could hear some of the players telling him to leave it. <laughs> Maybe he just didn't realise. <laughs> no, in the end, it was uh, had to go out of play for a goal kick. So 2 0 then to Fulham. Just got Matty Target down there. Hopefully he's alright. Yeah, you look at that back four alone. You've got PA, Target, Bednarik and Stevens. There's hundreds of appearances between the four of them. It's an experienced back four. And it's not the oldest back four though. Hmm. Hopefully he's alright. Yeah, just receiving some treatment there. Again, it was a 
one of those earlier on, wasn't it? So it was a well-timed challenge, but just came off good challenge badly in the end. He's found him, but he's, that's a good thing about Matt. He's getting forward a lot, and I think he adds an attacking side to the game as well. He's a, a very, very intelligent player. He looks looks forward all the time. And I think I think he's clever when he's playing football. Well, maybe this will do. Saints good if Matt Target hopefully should be okay here, but a chance to regroup here. Right, Jahidi to have a chat with his players. The Saints have only lost two games at home this season in the PL2 against uh, Brighton, as one of them, and Blackburn. But they've got off to a poor start, scoreline wise here. Trail by two goals to nil. Scoreline is not the best start, I think, in terms of how we've been playing and playing forward. I think we've actually had quite a decent start, really. But that's why it's football's a funny game. There's some good combinations there, though, isn't there, for Saints? Oh, yeah, we're linking up very well. As we were saying earlier, Fulham have had those two opportunities and they've taken both. A shot with the left foot, which took a slight deflection, well taken from Jordan Graham. But unfortunately for Matt Target, actually, it does look like it's going to be the end of his night, and it is. So he comes off, and Jonathan Afalabi is the man who comes on for Southampton. So it's a, an attack minded substitution, nonetheless. And Afalabi is Saints' top goal scorer this season, the under 23s, with three goals. Interesting to see now how Saints are going to shape up. It looks like McQueen's going to go back, doesn't it, to a left back position with Afalabi out wide on the left. I think that's a good thing about McQueen, he's a versatile player, I've played with him a lot throughout the years and I've seen him play pretty much every position and he does a decent job wherever he's playing, so, I mean we lose Matty Target but I don't think I don't think it's going to affect us too much because I think Sam, Sam's obviously an attacking player and he can get forward as well and then like you said John's got the most goals this season so I think it's still positive. Yeah, Saints still going with that 4-2-3-1 formation, good tracking back there from Hesketh. Ball out towards uh, Teller is going to be too far for him. Right idea. A bit of encouragement there from the coach, Rai Jahidi, down on the touchline. Throw down the left. Headed on again up towards Afalabi, the substitute. This time it's a well one free kick there. It's kind of hoping that the, the ball would have bounced for John then, but we've got the advantage and obviously we've got James Wall Prowse as a threat, so I assume Fulham would have seen his set play, so I'd be worried if I was a Fulham player right now. Yeah, well it was this kind of distance, wasn't it, when he scored that goal against Newcastle? Yeah. About a month ago. And he's gonna have another opportunity here. So Saints have failed to score in their last two matches before today, but the match before that was that game where they hit Newcastle for six. So a chance now for Ward-Prowse. The Queen stands over it as well. Both fancy it. It's going to be Ward-Prowse. But it was a well claimed in the end there for Magnus Norman. Yeah, it turned out to be not too much of a problem for the keeper there. Probably breathed a little sigh of relief when he saw it coming straight down his throat. Yeah, another player with experience. Magnus Norman playing for senior clubs. Had a loan spell at Southport, but now Saints have the ball with Hoybier. Oh, it's a good ball. Hesketh, real chance this for Saints. And uh, he's been kept busy, Magnus Norman, last 30 seconds or so. And I'll be little very surprised if we uh, come out this game without scoring because we're starting to find little gaps now in between their back four. And like I said, we've got a lot of attack-minded players. Yeah, one of the time Saints there getting in behind the Fulham defence and now they're coming forward again. Teller. There's miss hit in the end from Barnes. But again, that's three shots, isn't it? The one from Ward-Prowse straight at the keeper and then the shot from Hesketh and then a triple attempt there this time from Barnes all in the space of a minute so we're looking threatening <laughs> and if you were to just watch the last five minutes you would never guess that this score is 2-0 to Fulham 
No, again, that's another one. When you look at the stats, attempts on goal, I think it's been double as far as Southampton are concerned against Fulham, but PA back. Aimed up towards Afalabi. Header from Sessegnon. So it wasn't too convincingly dealt with there. Yeah, his first header put him into trouble. And Hesketh, good perseverance. Played it through. He's onside. Well done. And it's a great well finish. Really well-timed finish there from Teller. And Southampton, all of a sudden, are back right in this game now. And it's been a hell of a start to this game. Saints won for them too. I actually thought Hesketh was going to have a look at his shot there, but he's obviously got, got great vision and Teller getting up there using his pace. And it's nice to get a goal in now. Hopefully we'll uh, push on, grab another one. Well, it's been an entertaining evening so far, that's for sure. Teller with a goal, 24 minutes in. Nice com composed finish as well, just slotted it into the bottom corner, didn't panic. And you had that feeling, didn't you, at the start of this match, first three or four minutes before that first goal even. It was end-to-end, -end. you had the feeling this had the ingredients of a good game, this one, this evening. That's not let us down so far. No. Out left to McQueen. Hopefully I've not put the curse on it. Curled in. So it's coming forward again. Hopefully that will give them a spark that Southampton need, but now Graham on the breakaway. I think that's something we've got to be careful of. Obviously, Jordan Graham has got just showed there he's got a lot of pace about him, so the counter-attack could be dangerous. And uh, in the end, I think it's a smart free kick there from Prousey. But realistically, you wouldn't like to see him come out the edge of their box like that. Gone into the book there, Ward Prousey. A yellow card for him. Yeah, he's going to have to be careful now for the rest of the game. He's got got the best part of the game left, so he's just going to have to think about if he's going to do that again. It certainly will. And now it's a free kick to Fulham then. So 2-1 they lead. Who started the season with a 2-1 defeat at home to Middlesbrough Fulham, but as we were saying earlier, they have improved as the season's gone on. So Matthew O'Reilly to take the free kick. I'm disappointed with that one. I was saying that goal could give Saints the lift they need, but they didn't really need the lift, did they? The way they were just bombarding the Fulham goal there. No, I mean, you look at the two goalkeepers, you'd say Fulham's one's been the busiest of the two. So three goals already here, two for Fulham. There's the first one from Graham, as you saw there, who's on the ball now. Touch let him down, but he's still in possession. No, he's not free kick, says Adam Bromley, the referee. Again, Steve-O stood up well, didn't commit himself. Made, makes it hard to... Uh, makes it hard for the attacker to beat there if you don't commit. Well, Southampton's last win was at Cardiff 18 days ago in the Premier League Cup where they won 1-0 away from home. It's a competition which, again, is a good one to be in, isn't it? Especially when you look at the fact Saints won that a couple yeah, of years definitely, ago. Definitely, definitely. And uh, Southampton looking to get back into the top flight really of the PL2 this season if they can. Yeah, I mean, it, it was obviously no team much getting relegated. And All over the top there towards Barnes, he's onside, he could score here. Oh, and he probably should have scored there, really. And that would have been a terrific three or four minutes there for Southampton. Yeah. But again, just that little ball over the top still, caused all sorts of problems. Still knocking on the door. But yeah, I was saying before, that's, gonna, that's the team's goal this year, to try and get ourselves back up into the top division. Again, you look at the fact Saints were in the bottom two last season, but again, there was nothing in it between 12th to 6th, was there? Only about three points or something in the end. No, it was, a, it was a tight competition last year, and I think we were just a bit unfortunate with injuries and stuff. Now, like plays it square, a chance for Salampton again. Teller could score again here. Oh, and it just got under his foot. <laughs> and this is getting more and more entertaining by the minute, this game. I'd be, I'd be worried being Fulham right now because we are just attack after attack and it's, it's dangerous attacks as well. So what can Saints do here? Thrown in, Hoybier plays it back. Now for Larby there with a foul, the referee's going to have a word with him now. The substitute. 
Already produced a yellow card there for Ward Prowse earlier on. Don't want it to become too ugly this game, do they? But especially when you look at how entertaining it's been. Yeah, no, it's been a it's been a good game of football so far. I think the refs made a good decision there just to give him a talking to. I don't think there was anything malicious in it at all. What do you think would be the thoughts of Mojadi now then after what he's seen the last 28 minutes? I think he'll be disappointed with the goals, as, as any manager would be and any player would be. But if, if I was to say anything to the boys, I'd just say keep going. Keep keep knocking on the door. Keep having those shots because they will start to go in. Like, like you've seen, we had our opportunity and we took it well. And now it's headed across again for Saints. To Afalabi. The last game for Saints in was in the Checker Trade Trophy. Took a 3 0 lead. Lost on penalties in the end after it finished 3 3. Lost out on that bonus point, so went out of the Checker Trade Trophy. Yeah, that, were, that, was a, that was a harsh way to go out, having been 3 0 up. I mean, I suppose you could take the positives from that game that we, um, we managed to score three goals against the first team. And as Jahidi said, it's one of those, it's a learning curve, isn't it? For it's the a learning curve, like but we haven't had the best record in penalty shootouts. <laughs> so I think for years to come and, you know, competitions to come, we'll really concentrate on that. And it's all about learning to see the game out. But yeah, I think the boys should have been proud of how they played that night. That's Fulham on the attack now. They've not got it inside Saints' final third too often last 10 minutes, but here's Suarez. Chipped in, on oh, Graham brings it down well. This is a good opportunity for him. Oh, and it's in, it's well. And it's well taken again. And it's a second goal of the evening for Adebayo. Lovely chip over the goalkeeper. And Jordan Graham took, took his time, did the unselfish thing. Could have tried to take his man on and have a shot, but he played it square. And he made absolutely no mistake there, Adebayo, to get his eighth goal of the season. And Fulham are now 3 1 up. It's a good goal by Fulham. He's, you know, like you said, Jordan Graham's taking his time. And it's like the big man at the top is just being clinical in these past few games, but it's, it's hard to watch. And if, even for me, it's hard to take because <laughs> if you're playing out there and it's 3 1 after all the attacks you've been having, you'll be, you'd be questioning it. It's, it's, a, it's a hard one. It becomes even more of a bizarre game, doesn't it? We're saying about how Fulham had two shots, or two really clear cut chances took them, but. Just goes to show how clinical Fulham have been here tonight, really. Yeah, and, that, and that's what you need. You just need that bit of ruthlessness, and that's what they're showing. You just don't want to cut to the end of this game and the boys be kicking themselves in the teeth, wishing that they would have you know, maybe got that shot off on target. And, yeah, when you know you could have done better, it's, it's, it's harder to take. So Ward Prowse out wide. Now they tell them to go just something here. Here's PA. That's a decent ball. It's a good header there from Poivier. And he's put in a few of those good balls into the box and it nearly paid off there. Yeah, he's taking his time, getting in a good area. And it's nice to see one of the centre mids getting up in the box and wanting to go attack that ball. So Jake Flanagan with me in the commentary box this evening and we've seen an entertaining one out on the pitch but unfortunately for Saints, they are on the receiving end here of a 3-1 scoreline. throw to Fulham. It's important Saints don't get too downhearted though, isn't it? Because at 2-0 down, we saw them create chance after chance. Yeah, the, Hopefully at 3-1 as well. The performance has been there. You know, we've, been, we've been patient in possession, we've been playing forward, we've been finding little pockets, getting our shots off, we just need to find the back of the net. Like you said, we don't, you don't want Fulham to have too much confidence. Because we have been on top, and that's, that's how you want the rest of the game to go. Yeah, Fulham scored 16 from their last eight games going into this one. Now averaging more than two goals a game now, their last nine, if you include tonight. So. And now Harris gives it away. Oh, and that's got to be a yellow card, surely, there for Sessignon. Uh, great tenacity from there from McQueen. Won the ball back and started an attack straight away and did the, play, did the player get booked there? Yeah, he's yellow got, card he's, for he's him. got the full back of booking so he's, he's now got to deal with a pacey winger for the rest of the game under a booking so he's going to have to be cautious as well. So Ward Prowse had that free kick then from just over 25 yards early on in the first half now he's got one nearer towards the goal 
Although the Queen could fancy it as well. And it's one of those, isn't it? It's, it's not too near in a way. It's one that can dip over the wall, hopefully, for Saints. And both of these boys can hit a free kick as well. War Prowse. Oh, not too far away. Not too far. As it is, Fulham keep that 3 1 lead. Keeper saw it wide there as well, Magnus Norman. But uh, for looking at it from all angles, really, you can see uh, it was. Both have gone over the wall, haven't they? Both of yeah. Prowse's shots. First on target, that one off target. And now PA for Southampton. Doibier. Stevens. Esketh. Now then. Here's Teller again. Curled in. And Afalabi across. Yeah. And it's Barnes. Well done. And this match is proving extremely entertaining. We've had five goals, two for Saints, three for Fulham. And Marcus Barnes has put Saints right back into this match. We can't say that we don't deserve it. I mean, again. Great attacking play there from Nathan. Good position from John, waiting for the cross to come in. And obviously, Barnsley, goal scoring form, he's in the right place. Cross is coming, he's just stuck his foot out. And he's going in. Yeah, good play involving all three of them, where, wasn't it? You had Barnes, Teller, and Afalabi all linking up well. Don't think I've seen in the first half this entertaining for quite some time here. 3 2. And it could get even better here. Good attack and play there from Nathan. Oh, another ball in from Teller again, and another dangerous area, but no one there to pod home. Exactly. As you can hear out there, the morale is, is really good. You know, we've got the two centre backs taking the rest of the team on. I think you, there's a lot to take from this first half. Uh, just, just take this into the second half, and I think we will get a few more goals tonight. Yeah, 3 2 it is. Goal kick, 10 left, almost losing count here with all these goals going in. But, uh, goal every seven minutes here at Staplewood. And now it's uh, Ward Prowse chips here forward. Oi Pierre. Every time Saints coming forward though, looks like they're going to score here. And now he's looking dangerous on every attack. Here's Afalabi. Hesketh. Oh, they so nearly put Barnes away. Ward Prowse instead picks up the pieces. Here's Stevens. Afalabi wins the throw, and he's another player. He's looked dangerous since coming on, hasn't he, Afalabi? Yeah, he's a handful. He's a strong lad. He's got the pace, and um, he's eager to get in behind defenders. He scored his first goal against Arsenal last season for Southampton under 23s. And now here's Stevens. Ward oh, Prowse, great ball. And Eric to Stevens. McQueen. He made his uh, England under 21 debut. Back in February against Denmark, McQueen. He's looked uh, dangerous tonight. And now Hesketh, great. Play between those two. Oh, it's oh, a, a lovely ball, ball in again. PA back to Ward Prowse. Ward Prowse with a good ball. Couldn't find a Saint shirt though. Graham. It's great attacking play there from S. Linking up with um, McQueen and getting in behind. Sticking a wonderful ball in front of the uh, keeper and just in behind the centre backs. Just need that someone to make that run, take that gamble, get across the keeper. We've put a lot of those balls in. And, uh, just, just one deserves to be finished. Just pushing Fulham further and further back now, it seems, as well, haven't they? Last yeah. couple of minutes. Yeah. There's Fulham head on. Muy bien. Get the feeling there could be more to come here between now and half time. I've got that same feeling. <laughs> Especially if they can do something here. 
And as B.A. across towards Seller. Oh, God. oh lovely ball. Yes. Oh, and well Southampton have brought it back. Well Marcus Barnes with his second goal in a few minutes. And what terrific character Saints have showed here. And what an unbelievable first half as well. 3-3. I mean, three, three. Great attack and play there from Jeremy. Driving up the wing. Cutting in. It's a nicely slip ball through there from Nathan Antino Barnsley. Much like Harry Kane at the moment. Right place, right time. Well, so that's it's a calm and composed finish. That's five goals in two games, isn't it, for him, I say, after that hat-trick in the week. So, Marcus Barnes, who joined in 2014 after leaving Wolves. Funny thing is, it's, you're not surprised by the goal. It's like we've, although we've gone 3-1 down, that, even at 3-1, I wasn't particularly worried at that point. Obviously, I was disappointed, but I wasn't particularly worried because we've looked that dangerous. You could just sense more goals coming from us. Oh, yeah, you were saying when you had 3-1, but... You know, Saints were still playing well. And it's impressive that Saints showed that character. They had that belief all that time as Davis ball misplaced out for a throw. I think that's just what you get with experienced players. And obviously, we've got a lot of experience out there. And they uh, look to kick on even when things don't really happen their way. And uh, we've, got, we've gone behind by two goals. Now it's 3 3, so I think we've showed um, a good mentality to carry on and keep playing the way we're playing. Absolutely, yeah. Saints both twice coming back 2 0. They were down, then it went 2 1, 3 1, then 3 3. And we were saying about a minute ago there were more goals here to come, and there might be another one here, but curled out left. And now here's McQueen for Southampton. Nicely time tackle there from Jan. Can't believe it's 3 3, and we've still got about six minutes left to play as well in the first half. But, oi, bien. Well, we said it would be an entertaining game, but we didn't, didn't think there was going to be six goals in the first half. No, certainly didn't see this one coming. Let's see if the second half is just as entertaining. Surely it won't be a 6 6, but Southampton coming forward now with PA. More entertaining, just less goals on Fulham's behalf. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Yeah, Saints will certainly set off the three goals in the second half. And <laughs> a clean sheet. And a corner kick now for Southampton. Which uh, Ward Prowse will take. And credit has to go to Ward Prowse, the captain, really, at 3 1 to rally his troops. Yeah, definitely. And I think with the likes of Stevens and Bednarak, even Alwyn Goff, they can all help each other and help the rest of the team. I mean, there's not many younger players out there, but you know, you've got the likes of. Um, John and Nathan and they'll benefit from players like that communicating to them. And here he is again. Another decent ball in. Ball. Every ball he's playing in again from right and the left is just causing all sorts of problems for the goalkeeper and the defenders there but yeah. to be fair to Magnus Norman he did well. Yeah he's watched the ball well. Must be difficult for keepers with players running across him there because he's nipping front and editing but no he's timed it well. But yeah it's not just, just Prousey giving him good deliveries it's, I think it's a lot of fun for putting in some dangerous balls and even Pierre isn't he on that right hand side he's oh, been yeah, delivering definitely. them now is Ben Narek, Polish defender he's won eight Poland under 21 caps now and now Ward Prowse back to Southampton I think the key thing now is to Obviously, we're attacking well, but I think the most important thing is to see this half out, regroup, and um, start the uh, the second half just as fast quality-wise, but just uh, without conceding. That's Southampton. Trying to win it back now. They do with Ward Prowse. Big game to come. A long trip to come for Southampton on Sunday away at Middlesbrough. So it'd be good to go into that one on the back of a win. Some of the younger players will be involved in that one. Hesketh completely miskicks that one out for a goal kick. Next home game is against Wolves in December. I think you could probably uh, count that one as the first bad cross of the evening. Yeah, be allowed that one, I suppose. Yeah. Connie Hesketh, the way he's played tonight. You're allowing one. <laughs> you want to forget that one. You know, for such a good passer, he won't be happy with that one. But, you know, it's just one of the things that happened. 
But even since Saints equalise here, they've been coming forward looking to go into the interval in the lead if they can. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely haven't put the brakes on, have they? Certainly not. Looking for more. I think this is certainly the most entertaining first half involving Saint under 23s for quite some time. Here's Teller. Well oh, it's given away here. Barnes, Hesketh. Saints could capitalise here. Oh, oh, and they nearly do. Unlucky. Call a kick. Again, it's great pressing there from Barnsley. The guys had too many touches, and you know, we've got around him, we've got a tackle in. And uh, it's difficult to defend against this. He's got good feet. It's similar to like, he always reminds me of someone like Adam Lallana. You don't know which way he's going to go. Um, could shoot on his left, shoot on his right. So it's hard to defend, and uh, he wasn't too far off there. Yeah, there's certainly similarities between the two. Saints have had several corners in the first half, looking to take advantage here. Ward Prowse once again to take. So several corners, they can add one more now to that list. <laughs> Interesting to see how many minutes of injury time we're going to have. We've had one or two fouls. The game's flowed quite nicely this evening as well. So six goals, three goals for both sides. Are we going to see a seventh tonight before the interval? Oh, towards Ben Narek. Not that time, but they are going to have another corner Saints on the far side. Fulham have got two home games to come against uh, Newcastle and then Brighton. But Saints are looking to try and... Uh, get the big men forward here to take advantage. But Narek up there once again, so too is Barnes. Hoybier just on the edge there with his hands on his hips. Deep ball. Come on. Oh, and it's just missed kick there for McQueen. Any kind of contact on that and it could have really caused problems. Three minutes, so more, I think, than what we're going to have as far as stoppage time is concerned. We're going to have three minutes. And we're into it now. I mean, there's not a lot to criticise from the boys in this first half, other than, you know, the goals we've conceded, could we have done better on? We'll, uh, you know, the players will look at that after the game tomorrow and make those adjustments. But, I mean, attacking wise, I think we've been threatening. I think the only thing you can say is, with the amount of shots we've had, can we be more clinical? That's why we shoot wide. Yeah, two players have got two goals as well tonight, haven't they? Adebayo, who scored two for Fulham. He's also had non-league spells at Bognor Regis and Slough. I think that's obviously served him well with all the goals he's scored so far this season. And then two well-taken goals from Marcus Barnes as well. Yeah. But both on a hat-trick. You'd fancy either of them, wouldn't you? Really? You wouldn't want to bet yeah, They've both been clinical, it'll so be. yeah. it'll be hard to judge which of the two gets it. But looking like tonight they both could get one. What do you make of the way Marcus Barnes' game has developed though over the last couple of years? I think he, at times it's been hard for him because he's, I know he prefers playing up front and you know due to the players we've had he's been shifted out wide but I think he's always been positive in possession when wherever he's played and you know he's got his opportunity to play up front tonight in previous games and he's got himself a couple goals. And now here's Hesketh. Teller. Back to Hesketh. He's got space here. Oh, great trickery. Oh. Did too much in the end, though. Corner kick. Again, it's another, another bit of play going forward that's it's been dangerous for Fulham to handle. And especially as he's got himself into the box, and, you know, defenders will be scared to stick a foot in when you're inside the box. But, um, it's just gone a bit, a bit too far ahead of him. And they've cleared the danger. So it looks like this could be the last chance of the half. And once again, it's Ward Prowse, a sense of deja vu here. In towards the far post. That was the first corner which hasn't really caused any real problems, though, wasn't it, really? Yeah, straight to the arms of Magnus Norman. The Saints coming forward again. Uh, straight away, we're on the attack again. Chipped in towards Ward Prowse. Appeals for handball, nothing given. Here's Teller. Adebayo doing his defensive duties there, can also play as a centre-back. Here's Teller again. 
It's not a combination you'd expect a centre back and striker. <laughs> or Prowse up towards Barnes there with a touch. Yeah, doesn't that nothing, does it, really? <laughs> So the referee calls time on an extremely entertaining first half. We thought it was going to be an entertaining one between two sides who like to play football the right way, but certainly didn't see six goals coming, three for either side. And it was right from the off, really, where Fulham took the lead. And it was that now Jordan Graham. Seems a long time ago that now, cleared off the line. It was well taken with the right foot from Jordan Graham in the end, who made no mistake. And after that, the game just got better and better. From Fulham's point of view, it went even better for them. They extended their lead, went 2-0 up. A ball in towards Adebayo, make that seven goals for the season for him. Winning that 50-50 and heading well. But Saints, by that point, had still created opportunities and they continued to bombard the Fulham goal and they were rewarded for their efforts. A well-taken goal there from Nathan Teller, slotting it past Magnus Norman with ease. From there, you thought Saints would go on from there, but Fulham came there forward to create only really their third real clear-cut chance of the half, and they took it. They've been extremely clinical, especially that man, Adebayo, who got his brace, and then Fulham looked like they were going to start running riot. But Southampton didn't give up, and fair play to them. Showed character, got a goal back to make it 3-2. And it was a goal in the end from Marcus Barnes, who made it 3-2. And then a second from him made it 3-3. There's a lovely little ball in from Teller as well. A lovely left-footed finish from Barnes. And then that gave Saints hope. And it has been a half, which again, you could say it has been 3-3, but it's been one of those matches where we could have even had more goals here tonight. It's been an absolute thriller. And we'll be back for second half live TV online coverage here in this under-23s match and we'll hope for more goals in the second half. Half-time here, it is Southampton 3, Fulham 3.
so welcome back then to Staplewood where it's been an absolutely thrilling first half. It's one of those where you can't take your eyes off it. Southampton 3, Fulham 3 and for Saints they're going to be going in to the second half with a spring in their step. That's after they came back twice from 2-0 they made it 2-1 then from 3-1 they made it 3-3. Marcus Barnes with two of Southampton's goals. Nathan Teller getting their first Fulham's goals. Two of them came from Adebayo and one from Jordan Graham. So an absolutely fantastic first half from an entertainment point of view. Let's see what the second half can bring. We've got live TV coverage here on the YouTube channel. So Fulham back now kicking off and we'll go through those sides in a second. Southampton win it back with PA and already it's picked up from Ben Narek and already Fulham putting Southampton under some pressure here. Stevens has to stay cool and composed and he does. So the Southampton side then, it's a 4-2-3-1 formation as Hesketh played it across. Unfortunately for Southampton and Matt Target came off injured, the Eastbourne fullback in the first half. But good run here from Jordan Graham and it's a good through ball here but run just wasn't made just quite at the right time there from Adebayo on his hat-trick. And it's picked up there from McCarthy in goal. So he's in goal, about four then in the second half of PA, Stevens, Bednarik and McQueen. Hoybier and Ward-Prowse, the captain, the two in the middle. Ward-Prowse has had a couple of free kicks, one which hit the target, one that went just wide. Attacking midfielders, Nathan Teller, Jake Hesketh and on the left-hand side, Afalabi, the substitute, and Marcus Barnes up front. Fulham have got Norman in goal, a back four of Sessegnon, Davis, Diallo and Suarez with Harrison O'Reilly in the middle, Kivitneski, Graham, uh, Thor Steinson out wide as the attacking midfielders and Adebayo up front. Saint substitutes, Jones on the bench, Rose, Slattery and Middleusa and Fulham have Ashby Hammond, Atkinson, Jens, Alstone and Pierce as their options on the substitutes bench. So those are the sides. Ward-Prowse plays it across with me in the commentary box here in the second half is Southampton player Jake Flanagan and Jake it was an absolutely enthralling first half wasn't it it was, had everything really <laughs> it was a, a very entertaining first half but I mean attacking wise I was saying to you before there's not a lot you can say to improve on from us but I'd, say, I'd probably say let's start being tight at defending and um, continue the way we've been playing going forward because it's been sharp it's been dangerous for Fulham and I think we've caused plenty of problems up there. Yeah, and looking to do that again here is Hoybier. The Sousa's out, but as well to keep possession that time, back to Bednarek. Yeah, sure, some of the players go, like, you know, your Ward Prowses have been walking out to the pitch saying, you know, let's go guys, plenty of energy, plenty of focus. We carry on playing the way we're going. <laughs> it would definitely be a great opportunity for us to get three big points here. Uh, yeah, now it's a uh, chance for Saints coming forward again. And again, it was it seemed pretty apt that they went in at half-time at 3-3. We were saying earlier about they've got the same points and the same goal difference, the two. Fulham are only just ahead of Saints because they've scored more goals. I think Fulham have scored 17, conceded 17. Saints, 14 each. But there is nothing in it between these two sides. But Saints, possession-wise and attacking-wise, they have created more than Fulham, but it's Fulham who've just been the clinical. Yeah, you can see why they've got got goals in their game, because three opportunities and they've got three goals from it. So they've obviously got the ruthlessness, they've got the uh, the ability to be clinical. PA in towards the penalty area. Shot comes in. Oh. It's time to get more crowds, couldn't quite get the shot away, but now Fulham coming forward on the breakaway. There's a foul there. And uh, it was Fulham coming forward there with... Kvitneski. Yeah, he's a prof professional foul there. Pierre's seen the danger. Uh, broke up play, but you know, it's obviously both of our centre mids now, both on bookings with this similar sort of challenge. Um, I don't think we can let him break like that many more times. No, I have to be careful now. Yeah, we've been talking about how dangerous we are going forward. Fulham do look like they have that about them. They look like you know, we've just seen Jordan Graham have a good run and slip a ball through. They've got the pace. They've obviously got the big man up top who can put the ball in the back of the net. So, um, although we're attacking very well, we do have to be switched on when we're defending. 
There's obviously words there from their manager, Peter Grant. And now Jordan Graham wins the free kick. So Fulham to win the free kick. Yeah, they're looking to cause problems early on here in the second half. Nearly five gone in the second. Again, good feet there from Jordan Graham. Saying about Saints have certainly recovered from the fact that they haven't scored in two games previous to this in the league. And certainly made up for it tonight. Also kept three clean sheets this season, Saints, but conceded three tonight. And Fulham are looking to get a fourth here. Oh, it's one headed away. McQueen trying to get there. Gibanetsky has it for Fulham. Good play. Free weight for in the box. Flag stays down. Nicely timed tackle there from McQueen. He initially did get beat, but he recovered well and timed his tackle well from a dangerous position. And now is Thor Steinson chip forward. It's going to be too far for Adebayo. Fulham have come out for the blocks in this second half. They've started to press up high at the pitch, put us under some pressure just to see how we cope with it. And now is Bednarik. Well, Saints playing most Monday evenings, mainly at the training ground as far as home games are concerned. It ends in April, last game of the season against Middlesbrough. It's a long old season, but it's one of those where they're right in the middle of the pack, really, at League of 12, up in seventh. These two sides couldn't really be more middle at the moment as far as the table is concerned, but an opportunity for either of these sides if they can go on a winning run. Really put the pressure then, isn't it, on the top yeah. two? Yeah, starting from this game, there's a there's a lot riding on this one. Both teams will want to start building the gap between each other, and especially for us and any team, we want to start climbing that table because, like I said before, we are looking to get back in the top division, you know, and play the best teams we possibly can. Here's McQueen. This is dangerous. Oh, there's just no player in there to pick up the pieces. stops play. Hopefully this gets okay. So that's going to be a stoppage. You have three minutes of injury time going into half time. But what do you make of the second half? I suppose it's high expectation after the first half, isn't it? But it's not been a bad start really after the interview. It's not been a bad start, but even though Fulham already had three goals in the first half, I don't think they looked particularly dangerous going forward. But I think the start of the second half, they started to run at our players, you know, um, quick on the counter attacks. I think they're looking a bit more dangerous. And I think we need to nip that in the bud pretty early. Yeah, hopefully Saints can do that. Hopefully this will help them. And now, getting a chance for both sides to regroup here. But having said that, I still think we've shown our attacking quality. We've got a few crosses in. Well, Saints' last match in the Premier League 2 was a month <coughs> ago today when they lost 3 0 at Norwich. So it's been a long time in coming, but often in the way you have a bit of fixture congestion. But Hesketh, the last thing he needs, isn't it, to go off with an injury here after all the problems he's had? Yeah. It doesn't look in good shape. I mean, hopefully it's not hamstring based because that was his previous injury. But I suppose it's reassuring to see him on his feet. Yeah, Jake Esketh, who made his senior debut actually in 2014 against Manchester United. Ronald Koeman giving him his senior debut and was around the senior side last season when they were in Europe. But he's uh, slowly walking off here. And the options on the substitutes bench, Middelosa would seem made to be the natural choice to come on for Hesketh if he had to come off. Yeah. He's slowly building up his pace as he's walking over to the near touchline, yeah. hopefully. Yeah, he's, I think he's just running it off. But yeah, either Seif could be coming on or, you know, we, we know Slattery can play that, play in that role as well. So good to see him back on the pitch, which is a relief for everybody here at Staplewood. Hopefully he can run that off. And now Fulham in possession with Suarez. Yeah, good to see him back on the pitch. He's performed well. He slipped a few good balls in behind to, you know, Nathan, who's got on the score sheet and put a few good crosses in. So I think Hesky's been a key player tonight. Here's Jordan Graham, who was once part of the Aston Villa Academy. Played a cross. <coughs> So 
Suarez just loses out and played back now. Diallo. Suarez again. Graham's there as an outlet. For Steinson. Encouraged to switch, and that's exactly what he does. Ooh, good touch. Oh, and it's a shot into the side netting there from Sessegnon. Good bit of play there from Fulham. Similar to how we were playing, they're showing good patience, going back and across the line and waiting for the little gaps. And you know, it's a good touch inwards there. Probably thought he was going to miss it, but he's got there. And I think there's a relief that it wasn't a shot on target. But it looked like Al had it covered anyway. Yeah, they have come out well, haven't they, Fulham, in the second half? The side netting it went into goal kick relief for Southampton. Both these sides three points behind Brighton in fifth. Chance to close the gap tonight if either side can get a win. Hesketh just loses out there. Back towards Magnus Norman in the Fulham goal. Curling ball out that time to Suarez. Adebayo played it back. Here's Jordan Graham. Always looks like he can cause problems every time he's on the ball. Thor Steinson. Hesketh. The throw. It's a good little battle there between, you know, Pierre and Jeremy and the two Fulham lads. Yeah, it's been a very different kind of second half, this one, to what the first half produced. It was end to end the first half. There was a goal every seven minutes or so in the first half. Always going to be difficult to replicate that, obviously. But again, a strange one in the fact that even when we were saying earlier Saints were 3 1 down and we're still creating more probably than Fulham, the second half has been Fulham who've kind of tried to take control more of the second half. Really. Yeah, they've looked looked more positive going forward in possession and uh, started to be a bit more confident and looking like they started to overlap. You know, seeing Suarez starting getting higher up the pitch, linking up with Graham. Um, but I think this is a time now where we've got to stick together, communicate, keep our team shape, and sort of make sure see all their attacks come dying down. Here's Diallo. Him and Davis linking up well in the second half. The two centre backs is Thor Steinson, who's certainly an intelligent winger. Can play centrally out wide, and that's kind of what he's done tonight. Just like Jordan Graham, who goes central and out left. Plays it forward, as you are saying, to Suarez, who's been very adventurous in the second half, much more than the first. Graham out again towards Thor Steinson for Fulham. One there from Hoybier. Now Saints on the attack. First real breakaway of the second half. Teller, Barnes in the middle. Oh, it's just a wrong ball. Yeah. And now Fulham trying to do what Saints did a second ago. Adebayo, Graham screaming for it. Here he is. Good defending there. In the, yeah, good defending in the end, very much so. Yeah. And now all of a sudden we've got a real last couple of minutes on our hands here. And now Saints back towards Hoybier. Thought he was going to see Nathan do another run then, but it looks like he used up his legs in that first initial sprint forward. And Prowse just gets a good spin on that. McQueen. Clear behind. Saints won. Well, it went into double figures as far as corners were concerned yeah. in the first half, and they've won one now in the second. But it's again, it's going to happen, isn't it? The sides both attacking in each it's half. It's definitely been end to end football tonight. Mm. And Fulham, I don't think, considering the position they were in, they're on paper a good point, but I want all three here tonight, you think? Well, the, when they were 3 1 up. Especially from the first half, the way we're attacking. I think you'd be disappointed if we didn't get three points tonight. And here's Ward Prowse again with a corner. Bednarik in there, so too is Stevens. 
Teller is the man who stands just outside the box. With Prowse. Again, I don't think he quite knew how much space he had there. Sessegnon heads it out of play. I think that's just a situation there where you'd rather be safe than sorry. Get anything on it you can and make sure it gets out of your box. Yeah, forces it wide out for a throw, which Jeremy Pierre will take. One, one under 21 cap for France as PA uh, throws it in but this time it's easily in towards the arms of Magnus Norman there in the Fulham goal O'Reilly Peter Grant really shouting his instructions out there on the sidelines there the Fulham coach was actually once assistant at West Ham under Alan Pardew and now Fulham in possession now from the way uh, Fulham have started the second half, you can probably imagine what he said to them at half-time. He's probably told them, get higher up the pitch, start getting in our faces and be confident in playing on the ball because I think that's the way they've started this this half. Yeah, they've, they've kept possession much better, haven't they, in the second half? Yeah. Really. And now they play the ball over the top. Great touch. <laughs> oh, no, it's given away. McCarthy. Could have been punished there as Adebayo was facing goal. Joined from Crystal Palace, McCarthy. He's been busy tonight. And now PA. Graham. Back to Norman. Oh, now all of a sudden full of in space for Steinson. Had a small sight on goal, he's got another here. Yeah, he tried to use a bit of trickery to place it into the net. Yeah, but when you've got two players around him like that and Alex McCarthy, always going to be difficult. Yeah, I think Steve has held him up well and uh, made it difficult for him to get past. He didn't sell himself and didn't give him a yard to have a shot off either. And obviously Al was a lot on his line and quick to come out and claim the ball. Last half away it goes. Here's Barnes. On the free kick, he gets it. Interesting last half an hour to come, you'd think here. Evenly poised, 3 3. So Hesketh has safely run off that earlier injury in the second half. Ward Prowse, who takes all of these free kicks for Saints, is going to take this one as well. On his first England cap against Germany earlier this year. Elijah, Didn't get by the first man, had to bear away. Flags up anyway. Both sides more solid though, aren't they? As well in the second half, is there is that as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can see why we're in similar positions in the table because we've both been a threat going forward. And looking to be a threat here as well with Teller. Yeah. Foul. <laughs> well worked there by Nath. Obviously frustrated that he's been pulled back for a free kick because to make his way into the box yeah you can tell the frustration there he could have certainly fancied himself as he was prepared to run into the box but nonetheless it's a free kick in a dangerous position here for Southampton looking to take the lead for the first time tonight looking to get their ninth goal in four games or Prowse to take towards the back post. McQueen takes a deflection, second corner of the half for Southampton. All one there from McQueen on the far side, Sam McQueen. Saints have been better though, last five minutes or so. Yeah, they're trying to find their form that they, they had in the first half. Um, obviously got a fullback getting forward again, looking to put that cross in. 
and we've had a, a few corners. Once again, it's Ward Prowse with the corner. Someone's got to give surely with one of these corners soon for Saints, who yeah. thinks PA to take the throw. There he is again. Good football this. Bobby him and Heskers. Yeah, it's good can't play there. Work their way out of a tight, difficult situation. But you can see now Fulham are really trying to get in our face and to stop us playing. And Tello has been a nuisance all night, really. Comes off the foot there of Diallo. Here for this live under 23 fixture here between Southampton and Fulham at the training ground. PA swings it in. Got all the home fixtures in the PL2 this season, live, online, as well as the home Premier League Cup fixtures, as we were saying in the first half. Hopefully, Saints can go on a good run in that as well. And now Southampton in possession again. Played across to Hoybier, the day. Barnes. Oh, lovely play from him. He could get his hat trick here. Oh. Not that time, but well held from Norman. I think that just shows his confidence as well. He's tight situation, good feet. He's, he's looking for that hat trick. And although it's not gone in, I think that's what you want to see from your strike. You want to see them confident, to, uh, confident enough to take those shots on. And they had that sight of goal and went for the bottom corner. And now Saints again. We're saying about Fulham had more possession early on in the second half, but it's again as you we were saying, Saints getting that control and that possession last five minutes like they were in the first half, but they've got some defending to do now. Cross now towards Harris. It was setting on with a run originally. Here's Thor Steinson. Graham. Suarez back to Graham. Lovely football this, but yeah, he has done well really in the second half with all of those through balls. He's seen too well. Thor Steinson again for Fulham. Play from him. Graham wanted again out left, but there was an option there. Harris made a good run. Just couldn't quite bring it down as a goal kick. Yeah, we'll be relieved to see that attack die down. They um they were moving about quite a lot and you know I noticed a few gaps there, but I think we, we, we stay stitch on pretty well and trapped our runners and made them force a uh, force an error. Jake Flanagan with me for commentary tonight. It's uh, an entertaining one, particularly the first half. All the goals came in in the first half, 3-3. Three, three. Still waiting for a goal in the second, but both sides have looked more than capable of doing exactly that, getting that fourth goal. It's Fulham who spent the majority of the first half in front. And now for Sainton on the ball now. It's opening up. Got there from Bednarik and now here's Hesketh. Great ball. Oh, another oh. good ball and it's a, a forward dream that one. Barnes just couldn't quite get there in the end and it was good keeping in the end. Yeah, I think that good football around there. So great vision from Heskey, great ball through, good run and the keeper was alert and perfectly timed his, um, you know, his tackle to get the ball back. And now the gaps are just starting to open up again, aren't they, like the first half? Hesketh on the ball. Stevens, who's had loan spells in the past at Swindon and Millwall, also at Middlesbrough. One of a number of centre backs now competing for a place in the senior side. And now Saints again. Barnes oh, couldn't quite bring under control. I said there's about six or seven now centre backs on there, really, and then that's also not taken into account likes of Ollie Cook and <laughs> Alfie Jones as well. I think there's a lot of competition, but I think it's healthy competition, and uh, uh, it's good that we've got such quality players in those positions. I mean, you know, when when Jack was 
was in the starting lineup. He really didn't look out of place and you know, he performed to a very, very high standard. Now Fulham in possession now with O'Reilly. Here's Jordan Gray. Oh, lovely ball from him. Suarez. And Kavineski shoots. But that was a lovely bit of magic there from Jordan Graham on the left hand side. Yeah, he's used his feet well, found the fullback. Um, and like I said, like we're making it difficult for them to get a yard to have a clear cut shot on chance. So I think that's, I think that's credit to the centre backs and you know, the, the uh, holding midfielders. But again, Fulham are showing a bit of confidence and starting to get forward a bit and take players on. Yeah, it's more half of the defenders, isn't it, in the second half than the first. And now Kavanetsky as well. The ball. Side. Is he going to be on side? He is. The flag stays down. Adabe has got Graham in the middle. Just couldn't quite find him in the end. Away from Bednarik. Riley for Fulham. Switches play well. Graham. Still Jordan Graham. And still. Oh, that is a beauty. Fantastic. What a goal that is from Jordan Graham. Oh, offside. In fact, the flag is up. He's oh. offside. It won't count. So after all that, it was a pick of the bunch. But obviously, as far as Fulham are concerned, it won't count. And what frustration that's going to be from Jordan that Graham so after. What a beautiful finish. So frustrating because that's a phenomenal finish. Phenomenal finish. Picked his spot. Took it so well. And hopefully, from a Saints point of view, that will give them the lease of life they need. And for Larby into the box, Saints about to make another substitution here. Middle Lowe's is about to come on. So it's an Hampton substitution then. Teller is a man who's going to come off. Middle Lowe's are another player who can come on as a real impact sub. But brilliant, isn't it? If that was in a Premier League, people would be raving about that yeah. for ages, wouldn't Yeah, they? if that's in a Aguero or Kane, that's, that's all over the internet. People are ranting and raving about that. You can tell the anguish on his face when he found out that was going to be wide town. And the relief on our faces. Yes, <laughs> Little decisions like that, though, when they do go your way, they can often just the lease of life Saints need, hopefully. Now, PA curled in towards the back post. Hesketh. Oh. Not to be in the end. Goal kick. We're heading into the last, we'll be into the last uh, 15 minutes of the half soon. That's actually the period where Saints have scored the most goals last 15 minutes of the second half. So, just need to find those gaps and little spaces again to start getting those shots off. It's a good sign, though, isn't it? A lot of the goals come in the last 15 minutes. Good sign of the players' fitness. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Picked up there from the PA. Three, three, and neither side are going to be playing men behind the ball, I don't think, between now and the end of the game, that's for sure. I can't see that. I can't see this game ending a draw, or definitely the team's not going for a draw. And now here they come again, Southampton. With the Afalab. Or Krauss. PA. Rarely gives the ball away, PA, and he hasn't there either. Medeloza. Up, let's get in the middle. Nearly found Barnes. Well, one again there from PA. Afalabi's at the back post. They still going. Oh, oh dangerous yeah. ball. Barnes absolutely stretching for that one. On a cold night here at Staplewood, and still waiting for goal in the second half. But we thought Fulham had taken the lead again there from Jordan Gray, but the flag went up. A few minutes ago. It is a cold night. I'm glad I've got my uh, big coat on tonight. It's not quite 
John Watson's sheepskin coat, but it's doing a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait till January, he'll definitely have one of them there. <laughs> It's, uh, the temperature certainly dipped over the last hour, really, and now Fulham in possession. And Diallo. We were certain, maybe it was because we were warmed up in the first half with all those goals. <laughs> now for a throw. Maybe they can build a box for us in the winter. You never know. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the dream? <laughs> He's uh, played back there that time to Alex McCarthy, the 26-year-old. So we could be in for a grand slam finish here. All the first 75 minutes suggest that we could well be. But out for a throw it goes. I think if this does end a draw, I think both teams will be disappointed. I think they both feel at times they could have, could have won the game, but it's going to be an interesting end to this. Yeah, I suggest that both sides will be going for it. And Fulham have been fairly decent at home this season. They've won a couple away, but mainly picked up their points at home, where they play at the Motspur Park in New Malden. It's mainly where they play their home games. Now, here's Thor Steinson for Fulham. Nice one, two. Away from Bednarik. Barnes. Suarez. Graham. Got to make sure he doesn't cut inside. <laughs> Definitely want to send him on the outside after what we've just seen. Yeah, and in the end that certainly paid off for Saints. <laughs> Crosses have generally been consistent, but not that time. Similar to Heskov, I suppose, in the first half. You do one of them, I suppose. Must be that area of the pitch. Yeah. Now for a goal kick. So it's disappointing for the senior side then Southampton who lost 3-0 at Liverpool on Saturday but still so tight around that middle of the Premier League couple of wins and Saints will be back in the top half again similar kind of thing as far as PR2 is concerned here was the goal again I mean, the flag was up there from the lines of, wasn't it on the far yeah. side early have to see Not that many people saw it I certainly didn't but Jordan Graham certainly didn't either and neither did O'Reilly who punched the air as Graham found the top corner. Caught everyone by surprise, but Fulham denied the chance there to go 4 3 up. And now it's Kubineski here for the away team. Suarez. Graham again. Queen on it back, it's Hoybier, free kick. It's always nice when he wins those free kicks at this time of the game, isn't it? Really? Yeah, just, just sort of relieves the pressure. Relieves it, relieves all pressure, breaks up the play, allows you to regroup and, and get your shape back. And that's Saints on the ball again. It's about a long trip to Middlesbrough the weekend, but I suppose it's a good old bonding session, isn't it, for the players? It's a, it's in a, one way. Yeah, it's a long old journey. Plenty of time to talk. <laughs> Free kick the Saints. So we're heading in towards the last 10 minutes of this match, then plus stoppage time. And this match far from over. Hesketh, 1-2. For Steinson. Here's Graham. PA. Hesketh. Good ball from Will Prowse. McQueen. Four in the box. Will Prowse again. Green again. Barnes is for a goal kick. Ward Prowse very much a monster there in the middle. Yeah, he's um, he's linking play well. 
trying to get the two wingers, two fullbacks involved because you've seen from earlier before in the game that we're pretty dangerous on the crosses. Obviously Nathan Tenner's come off now, Middle O's has come on, got Marcus Barnes up there, but the rest of the team is generally players on the senior side, got Hesketh of course, but yeah. it must be great experience for those two or three players to have I mean, these players around them. Yeah, like I said, whenever they're communicating, they're always going to learn from them. That's Graham across. Goal kick. Yeah, they're always going to learn from the older players and like you said, it's a good experience for them to, to develop with. Well, Michael Alston is going to come on for Fulham, one of four players out the side after their result last week. So he's going to come on and off is going to go Sessegnon, who's made some good runs at times in the first and second half. So Alston comes on. Was, was on the Crew Alexandra books. So I know how good they are at bringing players through. And he is going to come on for Sessegnon. He's played OK, isn't he, out there? Yeah. He's obviously Definitely. got his socks off down that right-hand side. Yeah, yeah. he's a, one of the players with pace and he's sort of as soon as they've got possession, he's drove forward with the, with the uh, rest of the play. A goal kick now to Southampton. Headed on from Davis. Aaron Davis again, who's been part of the Wales under 20 setup. Cross to Suarez, giving away PA. Lovely football this time from PA, but the ball from Heskov couldn't quite find Medeloza. Graham. Well, no free kick. Graham inside. It should be a goal, and it is. And Fulham have taken it really well. Give it Nevsky with a finish. Graham was the man who set him up, but there's a bit of controversy. Pierre thought he was fouled, the referee said no, and Fulham have regained the lead. I mean, foul or not a foul, so good ball in, tidy finish. But yeah, I think he would be disappointed with that goal. Yeah, lovely Graham again there with the inside of the foot. Two assists for him and one goal. And Kibanevsky, certainly a tricky winger with a, probably the easiest goal of the night yeah. so far really with a tap in as you can see again there PA nudge off the ball the referee had none of it certainly close to the referee yeah nothing given Fulham take the lead but in a way we saw Southampton again probably playing their best football when they were behind exactly. last time personally I'd probably say that is a foul but you know that's football. Take some character though, wouldn't it, from Saints now to well, pick Fulham back twice and do it a third time. Okay. He wouldn't rule it out for the, the way this game's been going. But like we said before, there was always going to be another goal in this game, wouldn't there? Yeah, and unfortunately for Saints, it came for Fulham and it came 15 minutes after Jordan Graham's strike was cancelled. Was ruled offside there from an earlier ball. That was the most glorious finish of the night, followed by the easiest uh, tapping of the night, really. But now Salamton looking to respond. McQueen. Here at Staplewood. Our next match we're covering at home in the PL2 is at Staplewood for the game against Wolves on the 11th of December. A few weeks time. But here it's been full of goals. Seven altogether, four for the away side, six in the first half. And Salantum will be hoping that that's not the final goal of the night. If you used to look at the stats, you probably wouldn't think Fulham scored the four goals. But, you know, they've been clinical. Yeah, absolutely. And Saints looking for a way to get back into this game. PA. Yeah, 
Graham. There's Wall Prowse out there. Here he is again. Eric to Stevens. See Fulham now starting to throw every man behind the ball. Well, yeah, different kind of challenge now for Saints. Here's McQueen though, looking to get past that defence. There was a sp good splitting ball out to the left to him, but couldn't split the defence with that ball out for a goal kick instead. Yeah, good opportunity there. Just, just needed that bit of quality. Yeah, it's going to be tough now with Fulham men behind the ball because they weren't obviously doing that were they when they were 3-1 up in the first half. Yeah, for them that would be about seeing the game out, making sure we don't have too many dangerous attacks. But I think we just need to get a bit of quality back, find those pockets like we were doing in the first half and really throw everything at them. My JD, the Saints coach. Many years at Southampton and Bolton as well. How much of a mentor has he been for you? How much advice has he given you as well? Obviously, he is. having played so many so many games at the top level, he's an experienced head. He's also a defender, so any issues with my understanding or where I feel I need to work on this, I can just go straight up to him and you know, he'll give me he'll give me help whenever I need it. So he has been helpful for me, yeah. Well, Saints are looking to come forward. Jordan Graham tries to win it back. It's a free kick that time. Fulham are about to make another substitution. Moritz Jens is about to come on for them. The German defender. And off is going Matthew O'Reilly. So a defender coming on for a midfielder here. So they're just going to push a little bit further back here for them. As you were saying, <laughs> men behind the ball. Exactly. Just want to see this game out now and take the three points home with them. Yep, Fulham who play their games in the championship, the senior side. Both on the same level as far as the under-23s are concerned. I suppose it's not a bad level of, uh, bad level of support for the Chile Knight is. Not a bad turn-up. No, it's been good on this side. On the left-hand side, St. Scope. Yeah, probably from the view here, it probably looks like we're the only ones here, but <laughs> currently here on this side <laughs> from McQueen. And yeah, cause problems there as Alisson kicked it out of play for a corner kick there on the far side for Saint. So maybe this is the moment that Southampton get back into the game again. Ward Prowse to take once again. I know this feeling as well when you're oh, trying to hang on to a lead and teams are getting a lot of corners and you're just praying it doesn't fall to one of them in the box. Ward Prowse in towards the far post. Decent one, Hoybiet, a touch too heavy. Does it get nervy as a player or do you not really feel the nerves when you're out there concentrating on, on the pitch? Obviously, I think it's only natural before a game you'll get nervous. But as soon as you've had that first tackle, that first pass, then the nerves sort of go out the window. Yeah, I suppose it naturally it happens, doesn't it? As Kovanetsky, the goal is, the man who scored the fourth goal and final goal for Fulham so far, comes off and on is going to come Isaac Pierce. So again, more of a like for like substitution here but he's going to look to do some defending so Pierce on still time for Saints to get back into this one here's Oivier Stevens Eskith it's a throw. Saints starting to get the rubber of the green there. And now McQueen. Yeah, a lot less space now though for Saints on the ball. Yeah, Fulham are going to be throwing their bodies on the line now, making sure we don't get a sniff. McQueen again. Esketh. 
Still looking for options. The Queen. Well, I'll be good football here. Let's go. Just loses out, away it goes. Diallo clears. Anywhere will do as far as Fulham are concerned. Saints still looking to bombard the penalty area. We're about to find out in a second how many minutes of injury time we're going to have. Southampton 3, Fulham 4. That's good. Four minutes. That's all Saints have got. Oi Biet. Middle loser. So they have a corner kick to Southampton. Last few throws of the dice here now for Saints. So many corners, we've said about how somebody's got to give eventually with these corner kicks. Would be no better time for Saints than now. More Prowse to take again. Probably give a chance for Fulham to take it to the corner here. Graham. Bad Bednarik here. Somewhat with yellow card for him. Just that stage now there where Fulham just have it exactly where they want it. Yeah, they'll take every opportunity to run the clock down as well. Jordan Graham still receiving some treatment down there. So 4 3. But despite the scoreline, Jake, what's your overall thoughts about what you've seen tonight? I think for the most part of the game we've been on top and you know, as I mentioned earlier before into the game, we didn't want this to be a game where we'd be kicking ourselves that we didn't take our opportunities and it's starting to look like that now, so it'll be disappointing if it does end like that. But I mean, how clinical Fulham have been this evening, it's sort of matched how good we have been going forward, so... But at the end of the day, it is putting the ball in the back of that, and that's what they've done. Because both teams have looked like they're going to score every time they get in the final third, don't they? So from that perspective, it's definitely been uh, end to end game, very entertaining to watch. Well, Jordan Graham's about to come on again in a second after that tumble. Just one goal in the second half, and it's been the crucial one for Fulham. But looking for some late drama here for Saints. So before that Wolves game, Southampton have also got Blackburn at home to come in the Premier League Cup. Won one and lost one in that competition so far. And now Fulham in possession. Pierce is the one who wins it and just like Jordan Graham won that free kick a minute ago, so too is Pierce. Just trying, trying to see the game out now, Fulham. Yeah, they've done a good job of it, really, since going 4-3 up. Here is full start. Graham. Pierce. Jens forward. Ball out from Jens out wide for Fulham. And the Bayers are only trying to get there. Goal kick. Is there one final chance to come for Saints? To move it up that field quickly. Four three it remains. McCarthy forward. Stevens back. Prouse tries to put it forward. Only half away that time from Davis. Hoy Pierre. Now then this could be an opportunity. Saints in space with Hesketh. Who breaks down there, try to find McQueen. 
Still might get it though. Oh. And that's that. Not to be for Saints in the end. It was an entertaining one. It was a good one for a neutral supporter, but unfortunately for Southampton, not to be. They didn't go in front all night, despite the fact they did score three goals. They did show great character in the first half to bring it back to 3-3 after being 3-1 down. But it was a goal in the second half. Just the one goal was all that separated the two sides. And it was a good finish from Kivanevsky, who scored Fulham's fourth goal. So it was uh, Fulham who got that ball rolling early on within the first four minutes. It was a well-taken goal from Jordan Graham, who did have a good game out on that left-hand side tonight. And then it was two, not too long after that really, within the first 15 minutes of this match, Adebayo heading home for his first goal of the evening. It was going to be his first of two. We'll see a second and a second. Then Nathan Teller giving Saints some hope, and it was during that period Saints were looking pretty good actually and they were rewarded for their efforts. But then a real body blow for them just when they were looking like they were going to make it 2-2. Fulham came down the other end, probably only their third real clear-cut chance of the game and they took all three. Really well taken goal to be fair from Adebayo to get his eighth goal of the season. 3-1, we were still in the first half but there was still plenty of drama to come. Two more goals to come before half-time. The first for Marcus Barnes. His first goal of the evening after Teller's through ball. Lovely left-footed finish there for Saints. And the big tall forward made it 3-3 to bring Southampton really into life and really bring this game completely into life. A match which just got better and better really as the first half rolled on. And it was lovely link-up play by the three, including Afalabi and Teller. Barnes with a nice finish to make it 3-3. And we didn't really know what was to be expected from the second half. The second half, I suppose, it was two sides more solid, really. And it was the goal here from Fulham. It came a few minutes after Jordan Graham had scored a goal, which was deemed offside. And in the end, Fulham took advantage. So 4-3, it finished in the end to Fulham. It was uh, lovely football really originally. It was Pie who lost out. You can see there Adam Bromley just behind him, didn't blow. Lovely ball in with the inside of his foot there from Jordan Graham. And well taken there from Kivanevsky to give Fulham the three points. So frustration for Southampton who were looking to get back to winning ways tonight but lost 4-3 in the end. So Jake Flanagan, your final thoughts there after that one? I think it's a disappointing result in the end for us, especially of how well we played and the amount of uh, opportunities we've had. Um, but you've got to say fair play to Fulham. They've attacked well, they've been clinical, you know, um, they've been sharp going forward and probably uh, put an end to most of our attacks in the second half. They got in our faces and we were trying things. But yeah, at the end of the day, they were just more clinical than us. Yeah, not to be in the end for Southampton, but thanks for watching this evening and thanks a lot for Jake for joining me in the commentary box this evening. So we'll be back again for more live TV coverage. Blackburn at home in the Premier League Cup, then Wolves at home in the PL2. All to come before Christmas, but it finished here at the Southampton training ground. Southampton 3, Fulham 4.